Hello and welcome. This is Steve from Whiskey and Red Design. In this video today, I'm going to show you the basics of how to use Salient's Visual Composer. Uh, this is Salient's version of the Visual Composer. Visual Composer, of course, is a WordPress plugin that is pretty much usable on just about any popular WordPress theme. Uh, Salient's version is just a little bit unique to them. Um, so we're going to go ahead and focus on the absolute basics here on how to use this Visual Composer. Uh, now, I truly believe that if you master these basics and you continue to play and continue to uh, expand your own knowledge of how to use Visual Composer, you can learn how to do anything with this Visual Composer. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to build a pretty simple page like this, uh, but what this is going to do is teach you how to use your rows, your columns, and a couple of different elements in order to start expanding your ability to use this Visual Composer. So what the Visual Composer looks like on the back end is like this. So notice the rows, these are the gray boxes here, and our columns. So we have a row with one column, three columns, and split half columns uh, with an image on the right and text on the left. So we're going to go through and we're going to build this together and show you exactly how to get your page to look exactly like this with spacing, padding, and all. So we're going to go ahead and start a new page here. And somehow I clicked post by accident. I apologize. We will add a new page. And to activate Salient's Visual Composer, you just click this page builder button here. Uh, now we're able to add elements and everything to our heart's content. So what we're going to start with, which is your most basic element, is a row. So as you saw on our last page, we had three rows. So what I'm going to show you really quickly is our row functions. So we can trash a row, we can clone a row, and then we can edit our row settings. Now we also have column settings here in the middle. We have the ability to edit our settings and delete a column if we do have a column we'd like to get rid of. Uh, but what I'll do here is go ahead and clone this twice. So now we have three rows. Now what I like to do, and there's a million different ways to skin a cat, but what I like to do is I like to work with rows within a row. I feel like it gives me a little bit more control over my columns and my spacing, uh, but to each of their own. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and add our first heading. Now what this is is just a text block right here. Go ahead and add our whiskey and red heading here. And in our settings here, this word processor, a very basic word processor, but it's pretty powerful. Um, we can make our, we can go through our different heading menu here, bold italicize, make our bulleted list, numbered lists, block quotes, do our alignments, add links, uh, et cetera. So explore this menu a little bit, but for our purposes here, what we're gonna do is make this a heading one. Now, quick, HTML, Word website lesson, uh, you only want to have one heading one per page uh, that shows both your users and Google's little robots uh, what that page is about. So this page is about whiskey and red, so we're going to go ahead and designate that the H1. So go ahead and save my settings here. Now these little plus buttons throughout, so I did that kind of quick on the first one. There's a plus one that'll add an element within here. I can use these plus buttons to add on top below, add another row, things like that. So what I actually want to do is use this plus button because I want to add something right below the whiskey and red. What I'm going to do is use a divider. The search box in the upper right corner is very handy. So I'll add a divider and now I generally guess when I first start with my dividers, I usually start about 20 pixels. Now you don't with salient have to enter pixel, you just have to enter the numeric value. So here we have 20 pixels. Now what I want to do is add some text below our whiskey and red. So I'll go ahead and add this new element and I'll use my little search box and add another text block. Now I want to have a little bit more text in this but I don't feel like writing so I'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times. Now I'm going to go ahead and use our center function here to center our text just so we keep that nice centered look on this particular page and click save. So if I preview this on the front end we end up with something that's similar to what we were going with here. Now what we did have is a little bit more padding up on top and below. Otherwise, it's pretty close. So how we add that 
is we go right in here to our row settings. Now I have a row within a row, which may start seeming complicated. Um, for things like this, I like to use the outer row to control um, in case I have a background color or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and click this little pencil to edit this row. And you see here we have a lot of different row settings on this tab, and then there's more tabs on top of this. Um, but what we're going to go for here, and we'll explore some of these other ones in a bit, is we're just going to go straight to padding. So I'm just going to add 40 pixels on top and 40 on the bottom. And remember, you don't even have to add the pixel. You just add the numeric value. Perfect. So if I preview this, now I'll start seeing something a bit closer to the spacing I have here. Excellent. Now we're going to move on. Our next row here that we're trying to copy, a little bit of a gray background, full width background color, and three columns with some text inside. So where I'm going to start is I'm going to add a row inside of here. Again, just my preference. And over here I have these column settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this into three columns. Now that I have my three columns, the next thing I wanna jump into really quick is that background color. We wanna go with this little bit of an off gray color. So where I add this is into my row settings. So right in this box, we have the ability to add a background image, background color, etc. So I'm gonna just gonna go to background color and because I'm so smart and so prepared, I already have my off gray code there. All this is is your hex code. You can use the RGB, I believe, um, but I just use the hex codes here. I'll go ahead and save my changes and let's jump back in there really quick since I know we're gonna to wanna to add a little bit more spacing on top and bottom. We don't have any text in our box yet. So what I'd like to do is be able to show you where this gray is showing up without adding text yet. So as you can see here, we have our gray box. Now it's not full width, it's inside the container. So the quick setting to fix this is under our row settings again. Right up here, our type of container, we have in container, full width background and full width content. So because we just wanna spread the background color, we're actually just gonna do full width background to get that background color to fill that entire row. So as you can see here, we go from the little box in the middle, now we have an entire row of our gray box. Now I'm a huge fan of saving time and working smarter and not harder. So what I love to do is duplicate things. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clone my heading here drag it down into hopefully that box and I'm going to clone my divider and I'm going to clone my text. Now obviously text changes throughout the site. Um, what cloning allows me to do is if I have a lot of formatting going on, if I um, have done things special with the text, inline styling, centered versus different alignments, justified, etc. Um, it allows me to go ahead and duplicate my settings, and then go in and copy it and paste my new text someplace and try to save myself some time. So the first thing I want to do, of course, is change my heading one to heading two. And of course, we don't want it to be whiskey and red. So I'm going to come in and I'll show you a little trick here. We can go into our text tab here. And this is where I can keep my formatting, but go ahead and change my text. So we'll go ahead and just do a little services page here and add web design. Now, I can actually manually change this H1 to an H2 here, or I can go on the front end, click right in the middle here, and change that to an H2. I'll go ahead and save that. So, now what we have is we have the start of our first column here, we have our H2, we have our divider set, and we have our text block set. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate this two more times, and drag and drop these headings into the appropriate boxes. Now again, this is just my preference. There's a million different ways to do these things within Visual Composer, but this is just the way that I like to work. Now, all I have to do is come back into my other H2s and change my text. So, web development. I may be good at Visual Composer, but I am not very good at spelling. We'll go ahead and change our other H2 here as well to digital marketing. Excellent, so now we have our three headings, all H2s, and we've changed the text. 
Perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and preview this on the front end. And now we have our three columns, and we're getting closer and closer to our appearance here. So let's go ahead and work on that next row before we tighten it all up and make it perfect. So in this next row, we just have very similar text to what we have going on here, a little about section on the services and an image of us. So I'm gonna take this additional row here. I'm going to add myself a row within a row because that's how I roll. Perfect, now I've split it in half. So uh, something that we haven't seen yet is we're going to add a different element than a text block. As you can see here, there are tons of elements for you to play with. There's some additional elements down there from additional plugins uh, that don't come out of the box of salient, but these blue ones come out of the box of salient. So tons of things here. So like I said, once you learn the basics of how to use this uh, Visual Composer add-on, come in here, play to your heart's content, learn all you can, and you'll really pick this up quickly, especially once you understand the row and column concept. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a single image element. Go ahead and add my image here, which is this guy in the corner. Now I like to kind of just center my images here and I'm not a huge fan of animation unless the site really requires it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my animation off. The other settings I leave alone um, and you're more than welcome to explore these a little bit. You can get a lot of different things out of your images and whatnot. So I'll go ahead and save that there. So we have our image now in place. So now all we need is our text in place. So again, I'm gonna be lazy or smart, depending on how you look at it, and clone my previous content. Now we wanna go ahead and change our heading again. So I'll come in here and make this about us. Excellent. So if I preview this on the front page here, or rather on the page, I see that we just have a little issue with some padding here and we're not exactly getting what we have here. So the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the padding on the top and bottom, which we've added in the other rows. So that's the first thing we wanna deal with. The next thing is we wanna vertically center our text here. Cause as you can see on ours, we're smashed up on the top there. We have a bunch of white space below. So if we go in and add uh, edit here, we're gonna edit our row settings for our outer row and do something that we've already seen before. I'm just gonna add 40 pixels on top and 40 on the bottom. Now to get this to center, Salient has this nifty little feature. If I go into the row, now the row I want to go in and edit the settings of is the one with the columns in it, not the outer row. So I go to this inner row, I edit, and this nifty little equal height feature and content position middle and save. Now, if I preview our page, we should be a little bit closer to our original page. So the one thing we have missing here, as you can see here, we've tightened up the area around this text. See how this spreads out a little bit more. We don't have as much spacing in between these elements and here between the picture. So this can all be taken care of in our column settings. So just to show you again, this is what we're going for. Now if I edit my page, I'm gonna start up at the top. Now I wanna edit the column that has the most control over what I want to edit. So I'm gonna edit this column here. And this is a great feature that keeps you from having to deal with pixels and everything. You come in here to column padding. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add 6% and then allow you to change the column padding position. So for our purposes here, we're just gonna go ahead and add the padding on the left and right of the element. So as I preview here, you can see we are much closer, or we're dead on in this area, to our original process. So I'll go ahead and add the column padding into the rest of these elements here. And I'm just guessing, but I think I did 1% left and right and the redundancy of the redundancy office. We'll add them to the other columns here. And another 1% left and right. Now our column here, let's go ahead and just do 2%. And again, on the left and right. Now if I preview our page, if I guess the numbers correctly, we should be pretty dead on with what we started with Hey, how about that? 
pretty good, except for a little capitalization right there. Other than that, we have all of our spacing together. So, like I said, this is a basic video to show you how to construct rows and columns and to start building pages. Uh, once you master those basics, you continue to use and add new elements and play with new features, and eventually you can build like a pro. Uh, if you have any questions or if you found this video to be valuable, please feel free to add a comment below and check out our other WordPress tutorials on the Whiskey and Red channel. Thanks for stopping by.